Samaria women in this sense it's the Samarians and Jesus the Jew is the Jesus Christ where Samaria women declined to give water for them if a panchama needs a single drop of water they are not supposed to enter the village there is a border between the village and the wada village is the superior people wada is the dalits to say h2o it is very simple but for the people of village wada is not simple but they say it is a mighty movement everyone i am abhita tamaya lecturer department of english vidyashram pre university college the temple of excellence mysuru in my previous revision class i had revised the chapter where there is a wheel in today's session i'll be revising the last poem of the syllabus that is water by challapalli swarupa rani the agenda for the day i'll be discussing the synopsis weightage of the poem and the question answers water A poem by Challapalli Swarupa Rani highlights the gender discrimination that existed from times immemorial. She tries to explain it with many comparisons and the first one is the water is aware of the ground incline and it knows how people have struggled through generation and this is compared to the dampness that always exists near the well has that part never dries so here she herself has faced lot of discrimination and this discrimination it is not the present discrimination from the generation even now it is continuing discrimination between the superior people and the inferior people that is the upper caste and the lower caste superior people as well as the dalits so this discrimination is not the present one it is from the past many generation has we all know that the water in the well never dries in the same way this discrimination will never disappear from this world water is a witness to the difference of race between samaria women and jesus the jew so here the difference samaria women in this sense it's the samarians and jesus the jew is the jesus Christ where Samaria women declined to give water for them it is believed that the Samaria women are supposed to be the ones who are treated very badly has they belong to the lowest class and it is believed that Jesus who was offered water from such a lady was gracious enough to accept it has we all studied in our sociology text saying that there should be no discrimination no discrimination in creed caste in there should be no inequality everyone should be treated equally but where it's happening really no we can see the discrimination here so here when she declined to give water they are just opposing that panchama is supposed to be the fifth set in the varna category and these were considered to be the lower than the shudras and were never provided an opportunity to draw water from the well and they were forced to wait near the well with an empty pot till a considered shudra comes there and draws water from the well that is if a panchama needs a single drop of water they are not supposed to enter the village there is a border between the village and the wada village is the superior people wada is the dalits so here if the panchama people want to have a water they could not go near the well and draw a pot of water they have to wait for the shudra to come and give that is to come draw the water from the well and give them water so they have to wait for them for a longer time water again is a witness of humiliation that the wada girl had to face always when water was drawn and while pouring it into her container a part of it would spill and wet her clothes again a discrimination with a girl here a wada girl who goes to collect the water what the shudras are doing that is the superior people they stay for a long distance and try to pour water into the pot while pouring the water if little bit of water spills down 
So here the superior people feels that they are impure. So whatever the water was there in the pot, everything was poured on the girl and she was drenched and dripping. A lady called Karamacheda Suvatama has one who raised her voice and supported a Dalit boy who was being beaten by a group of youth. So here she herself is a Dalit woman. She also had gone through such discrimination and when she sees a small boy who was hitting for a reason saying that the boy was collecting the water from the well. She who had come to collect water from the tank raises a pot to stop the boy from being attacked. So she came to collect the water. When she saw that the boy was beaten by the superior people, she just raises her voice over there. The poet recollects her Vara people would wait thirsty for a glass of water. So she just remembers about her childhood. If they are too very thirsty, they have to wait for a very long time for a single drop of water. The poetess describes that Water to them is not simply H2O but a mighty movement and she compares that to a struggle at the Chada tank, the Mahat struggle. To say H2O it is very simple but for the people of village Vada is not simple but they say it is a mighty movement. They had gone through a struggle that is a struggle at the Chada tank, the Mahat struggle. They flowed their blood like a stream, but even then they couldn't win the struggle. They are still suffering to get a single puddle of water. A single drop of water makes them recollect tears shed over generation. It is not today's or tomorrow's. It is from the past many generation is still continuing. Here water is personified. Water knows Water doesn't make any discrimination. It is we human beings have made all this discrimination, all this religion, everything. But here the Vada people, that is the inferior, that is the Dalits are suffering because of all this. There were many battles fought for a single drop of water and in this process many people lost their lives and yet they couldn't get a small puddle of water. Because of this struggle, many have lost their life, many have shed their blood like a stream, but even then it was of no use. They couldn't win a small puddle of water. The community doesn't have an opportunity to take a bath every day. On the other hand, the entire village could luxuriously bath twice a day. That is the Vada people, the Dalits, the lower class people. They, are, they have to wait for an opportunity to take bath once a week. Whereas the village people, the entire village could luxuriously bath twice a day. Because they have to give the water to the lower caste people where they were not giving. Whenever the poetess gets an opportunity to recollect her childhood, she is able to remember the pain she had and her friends experienced when they had to carry heavy pots and the necks would start aching very badly. They had to walk miles to reach a kennel and almost had to steal water from there. So here the people that is the women of uh, Vada village, that is the women of Vada, they have to walk for a very long distance to fetch water. When they carry the pots on their neck or on the hip, it might start aching for them. But they couldn't do anything. They have to walk for a long distance to fetch the water. Water may appear to be a simple thing, but it's greatest quality is that it can give life as well as take its life away. So water can be your savior as well as a devastated also. It can give life, it can take life. There are occasions when the water could not satisfy a thirsty person but it would transform it into a tsunami wave that nearly swallowed many villages. 
the person people who could not satisfy the thirst of a person so for them this is an example which is the example that is the tsunami waves where it destroyed completely we have an example right in front of us that is the tsunami wave water has been the cause of fights between states between villages and in this process many people have been seriously wounded and some have even lost their lives so your water is a fight between states and between the villages from one country to another country one state to another country it is a fight for so what is the reason for the fight the reason is the water so because of this many people have lost their lives also whatever be the nature of water of late it has been transformed to sit innocently in a bislary bottle whatever the fight may be whatever the reason it may be but the water is sitting innocently inside the bislary bottle earlier many women like the poetess had to struggle to get even a small pot of water but now it has been transformed into a multinational market commodity it believe that water is present everywhere and it can take the whole world in its stride so here water is sitting innocently in the bislary bottle and the multinational market commodity they are minting money by selling the products and it is also said that water is omniscient omniscient in this is who is omniscient here the god is omniscient so he says water is every where and he also says that the whole world is in its tribe it is not one country or the other country each and every one in the world wants this water weightage of this poem is for 1 mark sometimes it might be asked for 6 marks also so put together it is for 7 marks let's see the 1 mark question answers how was water a witness to humiliation caused to the details water was a mute witness to the humiliation caused by the details what does the speaker remember when she sees water whenever she sees water she remembers about her vada would thirst for a glass of water all day who according to the speaker do not have the right to draw a pot of water from the well that is the panchama people name the lady who opposed the kamma landlords that is karama chedu suwa tamma name the village that was burned to ashes for a want of water it is mallapalli where can water sit innocently it can sit innocently in the bislary bottle later this bislary bottle was named as pepsi man's bottle water is the maha struggle at chadar tank water is both preserver as well as destroyer as i told it can give life it can take life where does water slowly move and sit finally it sits in the pepsi man's bottle what according to the poet is water now water is multinational commodity with this i have completed the revision classes of all the 14 chapters have a good day thank you